And Jesus is saying here, the new wine can be found only in the new wine skin. Fellowship with God can be found only in your new identity. You must learn to put off the old. You must learn not to operate in the old because in that old identity, you can never experience the flow of the life of God. We've been taking a look at the parable of the new wine and new wine skin. But tonight, can we take a look at that parable from Luke, from Luke's perspective? Luke wrote the same parable, but he added something that Mark and Matthew did not mention. This, is, uh, this parable is actually, many people believe it's the first parable that Jesus gave, the first parable parable. If you read the book of Mark, it's the first parable. In the book of Luke, it's the first parable. So why is that so important? Because here you see Jesus talking about the old and the new. There is an old creation and there is a new creation. Some people think that uh, Jesus was talking about the teachings of the Old Testament versus the teachings of the New Testament. No, it's like, it's like they contradict each other. Actually, no, no. G, he, he, the old covenant teachings, they are actually, they foreshadow Jesus. We do not do away. We do not do away with the Torah. We do not do away with the writings of Moses. These are actually shadows of Jesus, okay? What I believe the Lord is showing here is the contrast between the old corrupted fallen life and the new life we have in, in Christ. The old identity versus the new identity. Uh, Luke chapter 5. Okay, let's take a look at Luke chapter 5. But before we, it's actually in verse 33, but can we go back to verse uh, 27? Luke 5, 27, and let's read all the way down. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. And Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. This is actually Matthew. Okay, he, he has another name. His name is Levi. Uh, did he put Levi's? Levi. Maybe he is the founder of Levi's jeans. No? But, <laughs> no. Okay, this is Levi, a tax collector. And so he, he was doing his business. Uh, he is one of the most hated people during his time because he's collecting tax taxes for the Roman uh, oppressors. So he's considered a traitor, one of the worst, the most hated people during his time. And he was amazed because Jesus came over and, and he said, follow me. And immediately he followed Jesus. I can imagine him being amazed. Why would you ask me to follow you? Why are you interested? Why would you even notice me? I'm not worthy of your attention. Why? But Levi, stunned by the attention and the interest of Jesus, he left everything and he followed Jesus. And then verse, uh, verse 29, Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house. A great banquet. The same uh, event recorded by Matthew, Matthew did not mention that it was a great banquet. He, he, he simply said, while Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house. He did not mention the great banquet. A very humble man. But Luke, he mentioned it was a great banquet. Levi must have uh, had uh, so much money, a big house, a big, a great banquet was held. And a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. Okay, Tax collectors from all over Judea came over and ate. Verse 30, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to their sect, complained to his disciples. Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Okay. 
later on we see these people asking the question, why, why are you not fasting and praying? The followers of John, the, the followers of the Pharisees, they're always praying, they're always fasting. But your disciples, they're always eating and drinking. Why is that so? And why are, why are you sitting with tax collectors and sinners? Why? So this, this is a question. They must have been confused or they were like uh, scandalized. Why would you do that? Why is that such a big deal? Because in their culture, in their culture, sitting at the table with somebody, it means that when you eat bread, you break bread with somebody, it's like you're having covenant with that person. You are declaring you are my friend, all your friends are my friends, all your enemies are my enemies, my enemies are your enemies, my friends are your friends. We are together, we are one. That is a big deal. And Jews, good, good Jews would not even, like when Jesus asked the Samaritan woman for water at the well, the woman was, was um, she was, she was astonished. Why would you ask me for water? You're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. Jews do not drink from, from uh, jars owned by Samaritans. If you're a good Jew, you would not even enter my house under my roof. You would never do that. Much more eat at my table, use my spoon, my fork, my plate, my glass. You would never do that. But here, Jesus was sitting at the table with tax collectors. And they were scandalized. They said, why is your teacher doing that? Listen, why would Jesus do that? Now, religion... Religion would write off these people as hopeless. These sinners, violators of the law, these are hopeless. There's no hope for them. They can never reform. They can never change. They are written off. But you, you know what? Jesus did not come to reform people. He came to recreate. He did not come to modify our behavior. He came to give life to the dead. There's a big difference between religion and real Christianity. Religion is about behavior modification. It's about changing people's behavior. That's religion. Okay, this person used to smoke. Now he no longer smokes. Wow, we clap our hands. We applaud. This person used to drink. Now he is no longer drinking. Or he's uh, not drinking as much anymore. Used to be he would drink um, one, one uh, red horse uh, grande every day. Now it's one grande every week. We're so happy. <laughs> so we, it's about behavior modification. But real Christianity is different. It's bringing life to the dead. It's recreating people putting to death the old and birthing the new what's the difference like for example if you teach a monkey you look and you find the uh, pinaka handsome handsomest monkey in Davao and you teach that monkey to behave like a human being okay you shave off some hair of nimo t-shirt okay okay and the monkey looks like, looks like a child or looks like a man. Maybe you can teach the monkey to walk upright, teach the monkey, train that monkey to smile, do some tricks. It may behave like a human being, but it will never become human. It's still a monkey. Religion is about training people to behave like righteous people training people but no listen only Christ can live the Christian life in the same way that only humans can live like humans only Christ can live the Christian life and he gives you his life we didn't have life before we were dead but the moment we receive him we receive life 
you are now alive with the life of Christ and he lives his life through you. Christianity is all about Jesus living his life. It's not me trying my best to love. It's me trusting in him and letting him love through me. And me being amazed how he loves. Me being astonished how he loves. It's not me trying my best to be holy. It's the Holy One living in me, living through me. It's all about Jesus. It's not man earning points. It's not man earning merits. Okay, now you have lived holy for six months. Clap our hands. No. It's about Jesus living through us. Amen. He is the life. Without Him, we're dead. Of course, we, we were alive biologically. We eat a lot. We breathe. We run around. Yes, physically, biologically, we were alive. But we were dead because without Him, there is no life. And the moment you receive Him, you are alive. Amen? Can you tell the next person sitting next to you, you are alive with the life of Jesus? See what happened to us. How did we die? Why were we... We were born spiritually dead, far separated from God. Why? Because we were included in Adam. We were included in Adam. In Adam versus in Christ. In Adam, where were you before you were born? You were in Adam. When Adam fell... Thousands of years ago, you were not born yet. But where were you before you were born? You were in your father. And where was your father before he was born? He was in his father. Where was your grandfather before he was born? He was in your great-grandfather. And we can trace that all the way back to Adam. That day when there were no human beings on planet Earth, only Adam and Eve. No people in Davao yet. No people in the Philippines yet. The whole planet only Adam and Eve. When they fell, you also fell. You were born in this world fallen. Dead. Because when Adam died, we died. When Adam was separated from God, we were separated from God. We were born in this world fallen, separated, dead. In Adam. But the good news is, Christ has come. The good news is, what he did at the cross, you are included. You were included. When he died at the cross, the old you, sinful you, died. When he was buried, the old you was buried. And when he rose from the dead, you were raised up with him. And when he was made to sit beside the Father, you were made to sit. As close as Christ is to the Father, that is how close you are. As far as Adam was from the Father, that is how far we were. But now, are you in Christ? Yes. Now in Christ, you are not far from the Father. Yes. Christ is in closest relationship with the Father. And you are in Christ. Yes. The reality of who you are in Christ, that is the new creation. Look at the person next to you eye in the eye, eye to eye. Tell that person, you are close to the Father. You are close to the Father. Not because of your efforts. You were far from God. You were so distant from God, not because of anything you did. It's all because of what Adam did. When Adam fell, when Adam was separated, as far as Adam was, that's how far we were. Not because of anything we did. We were not born yet. We didn't do anything yet. Diba unfair? Unfair ba na? Damay ramango. Now in Christ, not because of anything you did, you are in closest relationship with the Father. You are in closest relationship with the Father. Because Christ and the Father are one. You are in Christ. That is the new 
you, the new creation. We need to see that. Amen. Then we can experience rest. Amen. I used to think I can get closer to God. The more I pray, the more I'll be closer to God. That's what I used to think. So I prayed as much as possible, nonstop. Even if I was uh, riding the jeepney, Magsakay ko jeepney, I would be praying. I would be praying. Magsakay ko tricycle, I would be praying. Walking down the street, I would be praying. And of course, I look really depressed. Because I'm, I'm like begging God. I'm always asking forgiveness. Forgive me. Probably I, I sin. Probably I don't remember. I need to, Lord, remind me. What, I, what did I do? What sin did I do? Forgive me, Father. Forgive me, Lord. Always begging, pleading. Oh, well, praise God. One day I realized nothing I can do to make me close to God. Nothing I can do. And why would I try to be close to God? He already brought me beside Him. Trying to accomplish what I could never accomplish. Trying to accomplish what He already accomplished. I would be like, Telling Jesus, what you did is not enough. What you did is kulang. I have to add some more. It's Jesus plus something. Jesus plus this and that. What he did is enough. Jesus is enough. So here, this is why Jesus approached these sinners. He had no problem sitting down at the table eating with these sinners. Why? Religion has... Rejected his people as hopeless. But Jesus, he sees them. They need life. And I have come to bring life. Amen. And so here, let's continue reading. Um, okay. That's verse 30. They were asking why Jesus was sitting with his tax collectors and sinners. And Jesus answered, verse 31. Jesus answered them, It's not the healthy who need a doctor. But the sick, and I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I have not come for the righteous. Actually, there's no, no one is righteous. No one. When he said, I have not come for the righteous, I have come for, the, for sinners. <laughs> he came for you and for me. And I love this. Doctors, when they, this doctor... He is eager to see the sick because he's got the cure. <laughs> and so let's keep on reading. 33. And they said to him, John's disciples often fast and pray. And so do the disciples of the Pharisees. But yours, go on eating and drinking. Why are you doing that? We're always fasting and praying. I used to fast and pray. Uh, every Friday and Saturday. But now, uh, eating time, Friday and Saturday. Verse 34, And Jesus answered, Can you make the guests of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? So it's wedding time. It's, it's festive. It's, it's feasting time. You cannot make them fast. Fasting, to them fasting is you... You put ashes on your hair. You, you wear sackcloth. Or maybe you, you tear your clothes. That's fasting for them. You wail. You mourn. You grieve. That's fasting. He said, no. That's very inappropriate. It's, it's feasting time. It's rejoicing time. Because the bridegroom is here. And then look what he said next. Verse 35. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. In those days... They will fast. That there is a kind of fast that Jesus is talking about here. And when is that? The bridegroom taken. It didn't say the bridegroom going away. It says the bridegroom taken. That word taken actually, um, it's the same word I translated lift up. Airo. Taken. Lift up. It's talking, Jesus is talking about the cross. Why? Because we are called to follow Him at the cross. His death being our death. The death of the old so that the new can have its place. That's the kind of fasting 
That there is a kind of fasting. Not, not abstaining from food, but abstaining from... Like for example, okay, can I give you an example? The old self has this need for recognition of men. There's need for validation of men. There's need for applause of men. That's the old self. That's the old creation. But the new self has this need for the father's recognition, the father's validation, the father's applause. That is the need of the new creation. But we have, like, I have a choice. As a leader, I have a choice. Which is my food? Recognition of men or the recognition of my father? I have a choice. And the Lord brings us through so many circumstances, so many trials, so many situations, and we make choices. And sometimes church can be dangerous. Church can be dangerous. What if our ministry grows? What if we grow so big? And what if, what if ang ato mga worship leaders, ang ato mga leaders are just enjoying the recognition of men? That is deadly. Good thing our worship leaders here, they do not enjoy the recognition of men. They do not like it when you clap your hands para sa ila. They don't like it. Diba? Diba? Am I right? They don't like it. They don't like it when you admire them. Diba? Am I right? Am I correct? All they want is that Jesus would be admired. Jesus would be seen. That's... Amen? Diba? Amen. See? This need to be recognized, to be honored by men, that is the old wine skin. That is the old self. That is the fallen creation in Adam. That is detestable. I cannot be teaching the word of God if that is in my heart. I cannot. I would be, you would be my food if I do that. I would be standing here to satisfy my need for recognition. Satisfy my need for admiration. I would be like uh, an artista performing. And it's very sad because it is the situation in many churches today. Leaders are honored and recognized. And leaders are addicted to the applause of men. And that's dangerous. That's what Jesus, I believe when Jesus said, there is a kind of fasting when the bridegroom is taken away. It means we follow him at the cross. We allow, we embrace our death with Jesus on the cross. We allow the old self to die with him. So that the new can take its place. Amen. Okay, let's uh, keep on reading here. Verse 36. Then he told them this parable, No one tears a patch from a new garment and sews it on the old one. If he does, he will have torn the new garment, and the patch from the new will not match the old. Okay, old. Back then, uh, clothes, mga tela, cotton fabrics, they shrink. If it's new, they shrink. Okay. I remember that. I was not born 2,000 years ago, but... Uh, when I was like <laughs> 10 or 11 or 12, back then I remember among the shirts, they shrink. If they're new, they shrink. Nowadays, no. Shirts are pre shrunk. But back then it's not. You have to buy something that's larger because after you wash it, after you, as a laundry, it will be smaller. <laughs> So this is what Jesus, that, that may be strange no, to some of you, but, but it, it was like that okay. much more 2,000 years ago. So Jesus is saying here, the new does not match the old. The new life is not for the old self. Now let's keep on reading so verse 37. And no one pours new wine into old wine skins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins. The wine will run out. And the wineskins will be ruined. No, new wine must be poured 
into new wine skins. Verse 39, and no one, okay, verse 39, it's not found in, the, in Matthew's uh, version or, or, or Mark's version, but in Luke's version, uh, it's found here, verse 39. And no one, after drinking old wine, wants the new, for he says, oh, the old is better. This is actually our problem. We tend to revert back to the old. Even though we are new creations, even though we are, uh, you're a new person, we tend to think the same old way. Okay, what is, can, can you show that picture, so wine skin? Pro probably that's a, a, a young uh, baka, no? Um, that's leather. You can see on your hung feet. Or maybe that's a big uh, rum. The whole body. Okay? Ang yang liog is over here. That's the opening uh, part for the wine. They make wine out of grape juice. Okay, here's the Philippines. We make wine out of coconut nectar. Okay? <laughs> Freshly harvested coconut nectar, bagong dawat, it is so sweet. But because of the sugong, you know, the bamboo container, naman siya yeast, it's a, it's, it's a yeast colony. Yeast will convert sugar into alcohol. That's new wine. It is sweet and it's full of life. Okay? Uh, because, because yeast will convert sugar into alcohol along the, uh, together with the process carbon dioxide is produced and so it will nigh froth do na mga bubbles no when you drink kanang freshly harvested coconut nectar murag mamaak sa mundila no it's carbonated because of the kaning mga bubbles it will destroy kung old wine skin old wine skin is it's brittle already. It's, it's stiff and dried up. It will break the old wine skin. And Jesus is saying here, the new wine can be found only in the new wine skin. Fellowship with God can be found only in your new identity. Amen. You must learn to put off the old. You must learn not to operate in the old. Because in that old identity, you can never experience the flow of the life of God. You can never. And this is the error of religion. Actually, the error of religion is trying to contain the new wine of God in the old no wine skin, old identity. It's man trying to earn God's favor. It's man doing his best. With all his strength and all his ability, trying to make God do something. It's trying to contain the new wine in old wine skins. Me trying to earn more points because I think the more I do good, the more God will love me. That is the old self. The old self is self dependent, the new self is Christ dependent. There's a big difference between the old self and the new self. The old self is self-dependent, self-sufficient. The new is Christ-sufficient. That is why we worry. Who, who among you here worry? You know why you worry? Because you think the solution to your problem depends on your ability. Now, if it depends on you, you need to worry. If the solution of your problem depends on your ability, you really need to worry. But when you realize that you are a new creation in Christ, in the bosom of your Father, everything depends on the Father's ability, on the Father's desire to bless you, on the Father's desire to provide for you, on the Father's desire to care for you and nurture you. It all depends on Him. So you no longer worry. Amen? Tell the person next to you, don't worry. Don't worry. 
Do not worry. Okay, here in verse 39, Jesus said, It's normal for people drinking old wine. Now, old wine here, he's not talking about those aged vintage wines. No, these are poor quality bahal. Okay? Manghud lang ni Sasuka. Poor quality. But very strong. <laughs> pang, pang desperado ba? <laughs> pang, pang, pang tumba. <laughs> this is bahalina. Okay, this is what we call it. It's poor quality. Okay. People, we have the tendency to revert back to the old ways of thinking. That's why we are told. Okay, we, we, we took a look at Ephesians chapter 4 last time. But let, let's, let's read the verses down. Ephesians 4. Okay. 4, let's start with 22. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self. Okay. Here it is, the old self, the old humanity. Put it off. You have a responsibility to put it off. It has been crucified. The old you has been crucified with Christ. Finished once and for all. Yes. But we have a responsibility every day to put off, to make a decision to put this off. The self-centered, self-promoting, self-sufficient, self-dependent, self-seeking me. I need to get rid of this, identify this as, don't. No, this is not me. I need to put it off. I need to make a decision, put this off. Put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. So this self with deceitful desires, this is not the real you. Put it off. Verse 23, and to be made new in the attitude of your mind. So it's, it's in your mind. The battleground is in the mind. The mind. This is where we think. And to put on the new self. Created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So the real you is made in the image and likeness. You are like your father. Is your father compassionate? Is your father merciful? Is your father loving? Is your father generous? Is your father accepting? That is you. Liwat ka sa imong papa. Tell the person next to you, liwat ka sa imong papa. You are like your father. You look like your father. That's the real you. Kinahang, we need to discover our true identity. We need to stop. I used to pray my prayers. I thought I was really praying good. I used to pray and I heard many pastors pray like this. Oh, Father, we are, we are just dust. Lord, mga ulod lang mi. We are worms. Mga ulod lang mi. And I felt good because I really thought I was agreeing with God. I really thought God looks at us and He looks like, like how, how do you feel when you're looking at a bunch of worms? No? Yucks. Ugly. Yucks. It's like, ew. It's like, it's like the Lord is feeling like, like that. And I thought it was really humble. It was, I, I thought I was being humble. Actually, I was ignorant. I, we thought we were humble. No, we were not humble. We were just ignorant. When your father looks at you, he delights. When your father looks at you, he rejoices. And so here, whew, can I hear an amen? A big amen. <laughs> okay. Okay, where were we? Put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. This righteousness and this holiness, this is not your own making. This is not produced by you. This is just who you are. You're rebirthed. You're recreated. We were born, our physical birth, we were born sinners. But the moment we believed in Jesus, we were rebirthed, reborn. And you are born righteous, born holy. Okay, you don't do need to do anything to be holy. You are simply holy and you just live out your holiness. The more you understand who you are, you live that out. 
Then let's continue reading verse 25 because here Paul breaks it down to, to he simplifies it. Verse 25, therefore each of you must put off, okay, here it is, put off, put off the old self. Each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor for we are, we are all members of one body. Put off falsehood. False security, false identity, false significance, false, false uh, source of, of dependence. Put it off and speak the truth. Verse 26, in your anger, do not sin and do not let the sun go down while you are still angry and don't give the devil a foothold. The old self does not want to forgive. That is the nature of Adam. That is the nature of fallen man. But the nature of Christ, your new, the new you, loves to forgive. Very forgiving. And so whenever, whenever we have this thought, That is the old self thinking. That is not the real you. Oh, don't me. Oh. I, I, I've seen it so many times on Facebook. Actually, that is the old self talking. Because the new you has the nature of your father. Forgiving. Okay, if you're angry, it's okay to be angry. Okay, we, we get angry. But, don't let the sun go down. Meaning, we forgive quickly. Don't let your anger stay for one more day, one more week, one more month, one more year, one more decade. And we never forget. That is the old self that you must put off. Because it gives the devil a foothold. We allow the enemy to divide. We allow the enemy to destroy. And that is the old wine skin. The new wine being poured is wasted. I've seen it so many times in churches, communities, groups. They experience all the beautiful workings of God. And after a while, after some years, they're all, they don't, they don't see each other. They don't talk to each other anymore. That's the devil having his way. Verse 28, he who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with his own hands so that he may have something to share with those in need. So the, the more people understand who they are, they no longer resort to doing things their own way. They trust the Lord. Verse 29, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. This is a good, good verse for husbands and wives. Don't let any unwholesome talk. If you need to criticize, say it nicely. <laughs> okay, I don't, I don't always say, say, me and my wife, we have arguments. We, we argue sometimes. Once uh, a year, no, once a month, or maybe I, I forget, I forgot. But this, there's this temptation to say something really, really unwholesome. Like, say out of your anger. But it's good to, to, to pause for a few seconds. Who is this thinking and who is this talking? Is this the new me or the old, old, fallen, corrupted, sinful? And we make a decision to put off the old. Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful. Okay, can you unwholesome talk? Apil bang sungug sungug ani? Apil no? Adilino. Yes? Yes? No? Really? Okay. Some, ang obang sungug kay Subrara po, no? Murag matinood na ba? But, uh, but it's, 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 you, you, let's be careful. Don? Okay, number one ka ba? <laughs> okay. You know, some, some people, some of, some of us here, maski grabe na kaya ang sungog, di kaya pa masuko ba? I admire that, I admire that. Uh, 
Labi na si Jerry, grabe mo sungog. Di gya po mga soko. But I think what, what, what Paul was talking here is words that really hurt. Words that really tear people down. That is the old self. Let us discern which is the old, which is of the new. And then let's continue reading verse 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the, to the day of redemption. What grieves the Holy Spirit? Division. Uh, unforgiveness. Breaking up of relationships. That grieves the Holy Spirit. It, it, it makes Him weep. That grieves. Do not, let, do not grieve Him. 31. Get rid of all bitterness. What is bitterness? Bitterness is when you look at someone. It used to be you enjoyed sweet fellowship with that person. But now... When you see him, you feel, you feel like your heart is, you cannot breathe anymore. <laughs> like, you feel, that's bitterness. Get rid. Okay, the word get rid, that's synonymous to put off. Put off the old self. Get rid of the old self. Get rid of bitterness. And what else? Ah, oh, rage, anger, brawling, oh, slander. Slander as we talk about people negatively, along with every form of malice. And then 30, 32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Amen. This is the new us, the new you and the new me. Our nature is that of our Father, forgiving. That's the new. Now, that, that's why Jesus said, People, sometimes, they want the old more than the new. They want the old more than the new. They will say, oh, the old is better. Uh, this is actually our problem many times. Because we tend to think the old way. But listen, be reminded this evening, you are a new creation. You are in your Father's image and likeness. You have been recreated. A heart surgery was performed. A heart surgery, the moment you believe the old heart, dead, hearts of stone, they were removed. And you were given a new heart, a new nature, a new self, a new identity. Why do I feel like this? Why do I feel like I hate? Why do I feel like uh, I cannot forgive? Why do I feel so worried? Why do I feel... Oh, feelings, nothing more than feelings. Okay. <laughs> feelings. Which are you going to believe? Feelings or the Word of God? You make a choice. But these are real. My feelings are real. Uh, you make a choice which is real. Word of God. Or your feelings. That's a difficult decision sometimes. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. It's going to be hard sometimes. But listen. Feelings are unreliable. It's deceitful. The word of God is reliable. Yeah. Word of God says you are in Christ. Word of God says you are in the bosom of your, of your father. You are in closest relationship with your father. He did it all. Amen? Amen? And He cares for you and He provides for you and He is there for you, your source.